Hey, Karen. I have to tell everyone I'm sorry. I got a little busy with stuff this morning and got a little late getting on here. <clears throat> I hope you did as well. It was nice, except for yesterday afternoon when I was trying to have a little afternoon nap, take that enjoyable afternoon nap, the, that thunder and lightning. Oh my gosh, it was, felt like it was right outside my window. Well, it was at one point. I literally saw the lightning come down and boom, big thunder at the same time. A little scary. Hey, Patricia. Hey, Miss Vicky. <clears throat> All right, well, uh, sorry, I was a little late getting on. We've had a lot of meetings this morning, all excited about uh, Father Barkley joining us. And uh, it's just an exciting time here. Especially excited that uh, this Sunday will be Rally Sunday. And um, it'll be our chance for everyone to begin meeting uh, our new rector, who we are just excited to have him with us, leading us. Uh, our uh, reading today comes from our lectionary, and it's the Gospel of John, and it's John 10, 31 through 42. John 10, 31 through 42. And thank you all for being with me, and yeah, thank you, Patricia. We will make sure to lift up Mike. And, uh, so thank you for being with me. I hope everybody had a wonderful Labor Day weekend. And let's spend some time in prayer today. We'll begin our noonday prayers on page 103 of the Book of Common Prayer. Thanks again for being here. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Saying Psalm 119, Your word is a lantern to my feet, and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute to my lips, and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Our reading today is from the Gospel of John, John 10, 31 through 42. The Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus replied, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these are you going to stone me? The Jews answered, It is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, though only a human being, are making yourself God. Well, Jesus answered, is it not written in your law? I said, you are gods. If those to whom the word of God came were called gods and the scripture cannot be annulled, can you say that the one whom the father has sanctified and sent into the world is blasphemous because I said, I am God's son? If I'm not doing the works of my father, then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may know 
and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Then they tried to arrest him again, but he escaped from their hands. He went away again across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing earlier, and he remained there. Many came to him, and they were saying, John performed no sign, but everything that John said about this man was true, and many believed in him there. The Gospel according to John. <clears throat> you know, there's a lot to chew on in, in this reading. You know, it's often one we read before a Holy Week. Um, but the thing that just popped into my mind uh, yesterday when I was reading this was um, like a job resume. You know, Jesus is, is given the resume. And what do you do on your resume? You say your work experience and you give references. And he's like, well, look at my work experience. I mean, this is of God, right? Uh, all the things that I'm doing are, are worthy of God and, and, and worthy of you accepting me and hiring me. And then I've also got my reference. I mean, I've got John the baptizer, you know, and he's, he said all these things and all these things have become true, you know? So I got a good reference and I've got a good work history and he shows it to him and the Jews, uh, the leadership usually, are all like, uh, yeah, but uh, we don't want to hire you. And not only do we not want to hire you, we want to fire you immediately. You know, they want to stone him. And I just think about this <clears throat> as, as something that, you know, here is one of the best resumes you could ever see, but they're rejecting him. But why are they rejecting Jesus? And they're rejecting Jesus, I think. They see the resume, and the resume is really good, but he's not feeling the image of who they have of God's son. You know, they're not, they're not seeing the image that they have put into their brains of who God's son is. And so the short thing, not to chew on this a lot, but the short thing that came to me was just for myself to look in the world and say, well, when have I seen Jesus's presence? When have I seen Jesus's resume in the world? And I've said, no, nah, no, nah, that's, that's not God. Um, you know, maybe I've had an image of who God is and, and who, who Jesus is in the world. And, and I've said, nah, I mean, I, I see the good things going, but it's not really what I think is right. And I think I've done that. I think we've all done that. And it just an idea for us is to make sure that we are attached to God's resume that we have now in scripture. And we see Jesus's presence in the world and go, you know what? I wanna hire that, I wanna bring that into my life and I wanna say yes, I wanna see you know, God's ministry through his son Jesus um, fully working in the world. You know, Maybe it's just us saying, you know what, I need to be attached and know what is of, of Christ, the Holy Spirit moving in the world and maybe I just don't wanna stand in the way, let's let that work into the world. So we'll continue with our prayers uh, and if you do have a prayer, please add them to the prayer list and we will lift them up today. Uh, I'm especially happy because today is the first week of, of Father Barkley Thompson. It's just wonderful to have him on staff. It just had a smile on my face. So we'll lift him up in prayers. Uh, but we'll continue on page 106. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Lord, we lift up to you those commended to our prayer list. We pray for the Episcopal Church, for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, the presiding bishop, Larry, our bishop, and we do lift up to you, Father Barkley Thompson, our new rector. We're excited for 
what you're going to use him for in leadership in this church, how he will guide us to understand your Holy Spirit more in our lives and we can come fully to know your love, hope, peace, joy, and grace in this world. We pray for Michael and Patricia, our clergy, and Joanna, our deacon. And we pray for our staff and vestry. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church in Australia. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. John's in Camden, St. Nicholas in Maumel, and Larry Mays, our retired bishop. For peace and an end to racism, terrorism, oppression, poverty, pollution, and persecution. We pray for all of our staff, but huh, I would especially ask your prayers for me, Luke Gilbert, our family minister. We pray for our ministries and we pray for food pantry, our day school as they begin their new school year. And we pray for our other special parish ministries, especially St. Mark's Free Read. We pray for the safety of first responders, healthcare workers, and those in the military, especially Megan, Sam, Breen, Marshall, Garrett, Kyle, and Chandler. We pray for our families expecting children, especially Hayward and Olivia Wetzel, Sarah and Michael Drake, and Robert Madeline Pickock, and David and Shade Zahn. We pray for all parishioners who are in need, sick, or homebound, and for those commended to our prayers. For Judy, Sharon, Eleanor, Carl, Mead, Esther, Carol, Mitch, John, James, Dean, and James. We pray for all those celebrating birthdays and wedding anniversaries. May they have wonderful celebrations. We lift up to you now those who we have added here together. We do thank you for this wonderful day and thank you for a wonderful Labor Day weekend. We ask your prayers for Mike, who passed away this weekend. And we do pray for Martha uh, during her transition with the help of hospice care. And we also lift up to you Cynthia Fisher, who has died this weekend. Lord, we also lift up to you our kickoff Sunday where we begin our Sunday school program and that everyone gets to meet Father Barclay. We pray that his ministry is full of your spirit and love and he feels the love from us as well. And Lord, we lift up to you those things in our hearts that we have not or cannot name at this time. Be with us and guide us and keep us on the path to your love, hope, peace, and joy. Let us see your spirit at work in the world this week. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you all for being here. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. God's peace.